This is Prince Ojong speaking of Africa from Washington, D.C., the capital of the brave and free world. Welcome to our show. Uh, our show is titled Speak of Africa. The purpose of this show is to educate Africans in the diaspora and the motherland on how they can move Africa forward. For so long, the Western world has dismissed Africa as a laughing stock. So we want to change this perception. We want Africans to realize that Africa has the resources, natural resources, human resources that can move the continent forward. With this show, we're going to arm you with the knowledge you need to move Africa forward. For today, we're going to start our show by getting close to home. I'm from Cameroon. So the, the, the show of today is going to be on the Anglophone crisis in Cameroon. The Anglophone crisis in Cameroon started over a year ago, precisely in October 2016. And the main TV stations are not really carrying it. Because they are not carrying it, we want to change this perception. We want the average person to know what is happening in this part of the world. So we are going to spend time talking about the Anglophone crisis. We're going to provide solutions which you've never had before. We're going to provide insights you've never had before. There are efforts by bloggers, citizen journalists, who are really working hard to educate the public on this crisis. For example, you have Professor Patrice Ngana. You have Sota Agbo Ebai. You have Chris Anu. You have Simon Achu. And you also have Fra Franklin Bayem. So all these bloggers are really educating people on the Anglophone crisis. So we want you to really know what is going on. Suddenly, now, we even have breaking news. Sisiku Ayuktabe, our leader of the movement, has just been arrested in Nigeria in a hotel, near a hotel in Abuja. So it is really creating a whole lot of panic. We don't know what's going to happen next, but there's a whole lot of chaos because people are really worried what's going to happen to all the guys who have been arrested. And so when you look at this crisis, look at what has happened recently. There have been killings from the government side, and the people now are forced now to retaliate. And so when you look at what has happened to some of the villages, like Kembong, government forces went to these villages and killed people and they sent them out of their homes. So when you go to Nigeria today, you have over 50,000 refugees who have been registered as homeless people, people who have been forced to leave their lands. The government has used soldiers to steal, loot, maim, rape innocent people without any ammunition. So it's like a form of collective punishment. Villagers who did not protest with any arms against the government are now being chased out of their homes. Now they are homeless in Nigeria. So before we even continue, we need to look at a timeline of this crisis. This crisis actually started in October 2016. It started with lawyers protesting against what they perceived to be Frenchification. They were forced to use French as opposed to English, which is their tradition. Because of this, they expressed their complaint, but the government did not want to listen to the complaints of these lawyers. So matters came to a head, a head when the government started punishing them and killing the soldiers, okay? So the soldiers were killing people, raping people in the Northwest province and the Southwest province of Cameroon. Somebody will ask, what are the causes of this crisis? Well, you have remote causes and you have immediate causes. The immediate cause of the crisis is simmering discontent by the Anglophone civil society. You have lawyers, you have students, and you have teachers. Lawyers are trained in common law. So they want to practice law in the tradition of the British that they have acquired. But the Anglophones are not allowed to use this British experience. They are forced to use the French civil law system, which is unfamiliar to them. As for teachers, they do not want the Francophone teachers to impose their own system in Anglophone schools. Because of this complaint, 
the government started killing innocent people in northwest and southwest provinces. And I just found a revelation. Why is this happening? Actually, declassified documents have just shown that France and Britain made a deal during the colonial period. Declassified British documents have shown that Britain sold West Cameroon for a meager sum of 20 million pounds. So when you look at this amount of money, it's so small. The oil alone, which comes out of West Cameroon, in a day, the oil production is more than 20 million pounds. So why are they selling these people? So that's really the top secret I'm revealing to you today. The British sold the Anglophones to, to the French for a meager sum of 20 million pounds. So that's a revelation. So what can really bring about a solution to this crisis? Well, from the way we've looked at things, so many people have tried to propose solutions, but the Francophone dominated regime of Paul Bia has been reluctant to engage the people in a meaningful dialogue. The first solution to this crisis could have been the ideas of early bilingualism put forth by Professor Bernard Fallon. Fallon was the most erudite, accomplished, and bilingual Cameroonian during the creation of the unitary state of Cameroon. He had a PhD in literature from Oxford University, and he also had a doctorat d'etat from Université de Sorbonne. So, Aijo took Fallon to work in his office as chief of mission. So, Fallon had proposed a model which can work in Cameroon based on what is working in Canada. So, bilingualism should make it possible for all the citizens of Cameroon, whether they are Francophones or Anglophones, to be able to access information in the language of their preference. If they are Francophones, they could access information in French. If they are Anglophones, they could access information in English. That's the Canadian model, which could have really been used to solve the Anglophone crisis in Cameroon. But the problem is, the Francophones do not like the British tradition, so what they do is, they decide not to allow English to penetrate the system. So that's really the problem with Cameroon today. Okay. The second solution that could really help in this crisis was really prescribed by David Abuam Achoi. David Abuam Achoi has been the governor of the Northwest Province, and he has also been the governor of the Southwest Province during the period of Amadou Aijo. So he understands these two regions intimately. His ideas could have been used to solve this crisis. But the government does not want to use these ideas. Paul Bia, the president of La République du Cameroon, is simply playing politics. He's playing for time. In his mind, if he just sits and waits, the problem would die from neglect. Unfortunately for him, this time, things have changed. The problem is not going away. People are dying. He's refusing to negotiate. Even in his uh, end of year speech, he refused to negotiate. But the people are hell bent on confronting beer. This time, the crisis is protracting because the Anglophones have help from the diaspora. Cameroonians who are in the diaspora who have run away from their country because of the mismanagement of resources in Cameroon are now helping their brothers at home to fight the dictatorial regime of Paul Bia. The next solution is the National Assembly. The National Assembly of Cameroon has also tried to protest so that people should listen and pay attention to this crisis in Cameroon. They have protested, but the chairman of the assembly, Kavaye Jibril, who is a pal of Paul Bia, has refused to give a hearing to the Anglophone crisis. Yet, many parliamentarians have been protesting, they have been breaking heads of people because they want 
the Anglophone crisis to be tabled at the National Assembly. In addition, the International Crisis Group, a non-profit organization that works in Africa, had already written extensively on probable and workable solutions to the Anglophone crisis. Unfortunately, Paul Bia has ignored this group. In fact, Paul Bia decided to banish the group from Cameroon by saying that they were really agitating in the country. So he could not use the ideas of the International Crisis Group. Then recently, the Secretary General of the Commonwealth just visited Cameroon and she talked about the need for meaningful dialogue. But it looks like dialogue is a word that Paul Bia is really afraid of. He doesn't just want to touch it. He doesn't want to touch it. And so it's like an ulcer. The Anglophone crisis continues to ooze. Okay? It continues to ooze. And from the way we see it, it looks like this is going to be Paul Bia's Waterloo. Because he is not going to be able to contain the Anglophones. The genie is out of the bottle, so Paul Bia would have no choice but to make peace with the Anglophones. So the prophecy which we can make at this juncture is the end result of the Anglophone crisis. What's going to happen? Paul Bia will be forced, probably by the international community, to make amends. Already, the Anglophones are leaving. To, we have a new government that is representing the Anglophones in Nigeria called the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. So, Bia stands to lose his most prized possession, which is the Northwest and Southwest regions, which produce over 80% of the wealth of the country. So, that's really going to be a big blow to Bia. As we see it, Paul Bia might win the election in 2018, which is this year. Probably, yes, he will win. But we know he's not going to be able to get the Anglophones back into the fold because they are gone and it looks like they are gone and gone forever. So we think that now is the time for the members of the international community to put pressure on Paul Bia to come to the table and talk peace with Anglophones. Killing people in villages, sending them to Nigeria, maiming, it's not helping anyone. Recently, as we predicted, the people now are taking up arms. They are seizing arms from the soldiers and killing the soldiers with their own ammunition. We had predicted this over six months ago. So now is the time for the international community to get in and try to put a stop on the genocide that is happening in Anglophone Cameroon. Thank you.